Hello. It's good to see you. Today we're going to be reading some recipes from two little books. Um, this one is uh, soups, and then we also have one of vegetables. Each one has a table of contents, and you see that there are not a lot of recipes in each one, but we're going to read them. Each one comes with a really nice picture, so you can see what it's going to look like. For the soups, we're going to read recipes for chicken with pasta, minestrone, tomato with cheddar cheese, cream and basil, roasted butternut squash with apples, cream of broccoli, New England clam chowder, French onion with a cheesy crust, three bean, classic gazpacho, curried lentil, and split pea with smoked turkey. And vegetables. We have roasted mixed vegetables, basic stir-fry, butternut squash with thyme and honey, roasted beets with fresh herbs, pan-seared corn on the cob, that sounds good, cherry tomatoes with garlic and rosemary, garlic rosemary roasted potatoes, which I've had, it's actually really yummy, roasted carrots, mushrooms with rosemary, roasted brussels sprouts, and zucchini pancakes. So it all sounds quite good. So we'll start here with the soups. Ooh, look at that one, that looks yummy. This is chicken with pasta. And this is going to give you 10 to 12 cups. And your ingredients are listed here. You're going to need one tablespoon of olive oil, one large yellow onion, peeled and finely chopped, two carrots, scrubbed and sliced or diced, two celery stalk stalks, sliced or diced, one teaspoon of dried marjoram, or one tablespoon of chopped fresh, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, or one tablespoon of chopped fresh, one teaspoon of dried thyme, or one tablespoon chopped fresh, 10 cups of chicken broth, a half a cup of small shaped pasta, and one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breasts diced. And then we have some simple instructions. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low and, when it is hot, add the oil. Add the onion, carrots, celery, and herbs and cook covered until the vegetables are tender about 15 minutes. Add the broth, raise the heat to high, and bring to a boil. Lower the heat to low and cook uncovered for one hour. Add the pasta and cook partially covered until tender, about 20 minutes. Add the chicken, stir, and cook until heated through about 20 minutes. Serve right away or cover and refrigerate up to three days. That sounds pretty simple. Well, that's a colorful one there. <laughs> Next, we have minestrone, and the yield for this one is 12 to 14 cups. We have quite a few ingredients here. You will need one tablespoon of olive or canola oil, one large yellow onion, peeled and finely chopped, two garlic cloves peeled and finely chopped, two celery stalks sliced, two carrots scrubbed and sliced, two zucchini quartered lengthwise and sliced, two teaspoons of dried basil, one 16-ounce can of diced tomatoes, including the liquid, ten cups of chicken or beef broth, one 15 and a half ounce can of dark red kidney or white cannell cannellini beans, drained and rinsed. Parmes Parmesan cheese rind, about 5 inches. One cup of cooked medium sized pasta. Kosher salt and black pepper to taste. Half a cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Half a cup of chopped fresh basil and or parsley leaves. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low and, when it is hot, add the oil. Add the onion, garlic, celery, carrots, zucchini, and dried basil and cook 
covered until the vegetables are tender, about 15 minutes. Add the tomatoes, broth, beans, and Parmesan cheese rind. Raise the heat to high and bring to a boil. Lower the heat to low and cook, partially covered until the soup has come together, about one and a half hours. One to one and a half hours. Add the pasta, cover, and refrigerate at least overnight and up to two days. Remove the Parmesan cheese rind. To serve, reheat over low. Add salt and pepper to taste. Garnish with the Parmesan cheese and chopped basil or parsley leaves. And this sounds like an interesting one. I've never tried tomato soup with cheddar cheese. This is tomato with cheddar cheese, cream, and basil, and it yields seven to eight cups. And here we have the list of ingredients you will need. One tablespoon of unsalted butter. One large yellow onion, peeled and chopped. One carrot, scrubbed and sliced. Two garlic cloves, peeled and sliced. Two 28-ounce cans of diced tomatoes, including the liquid. Four cups of chicken broth. One cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. One tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Half a cup of chopped fresh basil leaves, plus additional for garnish. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low, and when it is hot, add the butter. When the butter has melted, add the onion, carrot, and garlic, and cook until the vegetables are tender and lightly colored about 15 minutes. Add the tomatoes and chicken broth and bring to a bowl. Lower the heat and cook 30 to 45 minutes. Set aside to cool for 20 minutes. Using a slotted spoon, very carefully remove the soup solids and put them in a blender. Do not fill more than halfway. Put the top on the blender and remove the little cap in the center. Cover it loosely with a clean dish towel. Turn the blender to the lowest speed and increase the speed as the soup purees. Gradually add the cooking liquid, cheese, vinegar, and basil, and blend until smooth. Repeat until all the soup has been blended. Serve right away, each bowl garnished with a basil leaf, or transfer to a container, cover, and refrigerate up to three days. I did kind of wonder how they were going to get that consistency. <laughs> it's easy. A blender. The next recipe also looks nice. This is roasted butternut squash with apples. And your yield is going to be seven to eight cups. And not as many ingredients. You will need one large butternut squash, peeled, seeded, and cubed. One Granny Smith or other tart apple, peeled, cored, and cubed. Two tablespoons of olive oil. One large yellow onion, peeled and chopped. Two garlic cloves, peeled and chopped. Two teaspoons of curry powder. One teaspoon of dried basil. Eight cups of chicken or vegetable broth. And a half a cup of dry white wine. And then your first step will be to preheat the oven to 425 degrees. Put the squash, apple, and one tablespoon of oil on a baking sheet and mix well. Transfer to the oven and roast until the squash is browned and tender, about 40 minutes. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low, and when it is hot, add the remaining one tablespoon of olive oil. Add the onion, garlic, curry, and basil, and cook until the vegetables are tender, about 10 to 15 minutes. Add the roasted squash, apples, broth, and wine, and bring to a bowl. Turn the heat down to low and cook until all the ingredients have come together, about 10 to 15 minutes. Using a slotted spoon, very carefully remove the soup solids and put them in a blender. Do not fill more than halfway. Put the top on the blender and remove the little cap in the center. 
Cover it loosely with a clean dish towel. Turn the blender to the lowest speed and increase the speed as the soup purees. Gradually add the cooking liquid and blend until smooth. Repeat until all the soup has been blended. Serve right away or transfer to a container. Cover and refrigerate up to three days. So it's similar to the tomato soup. Wow, that almost looks like a dip. <laughs> it says there's a little note here on the bottom that says try on casseroles. This is cream of broccoli, and the yield will be six to seven cups. You will need one tablespoon of unsalted butter, one large yellow onion peeled and coarsely chopped, one celery stalk chopped, one small carrot scrubbed and thinly sliced, five to six cups of chicken broth, depending on the size of the broccoli head, one head of broccoli, woody stems discarded, florets chopped, one half cup of heavy or light cream, and kosher salt and black pepper to taste. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low, and when it is hot, add the butter. Add the onion, celery, and carrot, and cook until tender and lightly colored, about 10 to 15 minutes. Add the chicken broth, raise the heat to high, and bring to a bowl. While the broth is boiling, slowly add the broccoli florets. Return to a bowl briefly. Lower the heat to medium and cook until the broccoli is just tender, about five to eight minutes. Do not overcook the broccoli. Remember, it will continue to cook as it sits. Using a slotted spoon, very carefully remove the soup solids and put them in a blender. Do not fill more than halfway. Put the top on the blender and remove the little cap in the center. Cover it loosely with a clean dish towel. Turn the blender to the lowest speed and increase the speed as the soup purees. Gradually add the cooking liquid and cream and blend until smooth. Repeat until all the soup has been blended. Add the salt and pepper and serve right away or transfer to a container. Cover and refrigerate up to three days. It might not be bad. I'm not a big broccoli fan, though. And next, we have this dish that looks like something people other than me would love. This is New England clam chowder. And this recipe will yield 8 to 10 cups. And here are the things you're going to need. You will need 2 tablespoons of unsalted butter or a half a pound of bacon. One ye much large yellow onion, peeled and finely chopped. Two garlic cloves, peeled and pressed or finely chopped. Quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Eight cups of clam juice, or four cups of clam juice and four cups of water. One large potato, scrubbed and diced, about two cups. Two celery stalks, thinly sliced. One teaspoon of dried thyme, or one tablespoon of fresh. One cup of light or heavy cream. One pound of raw clams, shelled. And a quarter cup of chopped fresh Italian flat leaf parsley leaves. If you are using butter, put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low. And when it is hot, add the butter. If you are using bacon, Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low, and when it is hot, add the bacon and cook until golden brown, about 10 minutes. Discard, but all, discard all but two tablespoons of fat. Add the onion and garlic and cook, covered, until the vegetables are tender, about 10 to 15 minutes. Gradually add the flour, stirring constantly. Gradually add the clam juice, and when it is thoroughly incorporated, add the potatoes, celery, and thyme. Raise heat to high and bring just to a bowl. Lower the heat and cook until the potatoes are tender, about 20 minutes. Slowly add the cream and clams and cook until the clams are cooked throughout, about 5 minutes. 
Be very careful not to overcook them. Serve right away, garnished with parsley, or transfer to a container. Cover and refrigerate up to three days. Oh, now that looks really good. This is a French onion with a cheesy crust. Let's spread over here. The yield for this recipe is eight cups. And you will need the following. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Two yar large yellow onions peeled and thinly sliced. Two red onions peeled and thinly sliced. One teaspoon of kosher salt. One tablespoon of sugar, six cups of chicken broth, two cups of beef broth, a quarter cup of dry red wine, two sprigs of fresh flat leaf parsley, plus additional for garnish, one sprig of fresh thyme, one bay leaf, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, that's optional, kosher salt and black pepper to taste. One baguette cut into three-quarter inch slices, thinly sliced Gruyere cheese, and three-quarters of a cup of finely grated Asiago or Parmesan cheese. For the soup, put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium-low, and when it is hot, add the butter. When the butter has melted, add the onions, salt, and sugar, and cook stirring frequently until the onions are golden and very, very tender, about 30 to 35 minutes. Add the broths, red wine, parsley, thyme, and bay leaf, and bring to a low bowl. Cook for 20 minutes. Add the balsamic vinegar and salt and pepper to taste. Throw away the herbs. Continue with recipe or transfer to a container Cover and refrigerate for up to two days. For the cheesy crust, preheat the broiler and adjust the rack about two-thirds of the way up. Set oven-proof soup, bowl, soup bowls on a baking sheet and fill each with about one and a half cups of soup. Top each bowl with a slice of bread. Top the bread with a thin layer of Gruyere cheese and then sprinkle with the Asiago cheese. Place the bowls carefully under the broiler and broil until well browned and bubbly, about three to five minutes. Serve right away, garnished with parsley. It does look nice. And next, we have this beautiful dish. This is three bean. And the yield for this one is 10 to 12 cups. Quite a few ingredients. You will need one tablespoon of olive oil, one large yellow onion, peeled and chopped, two celery stalks diced, five carrots scrubbed and diced, two to three garlic cloves peeled and chopped, one teaspoon of dried fennel seed, that's optional, two bay leaves, six cups of assorted canned beans, kidney, black, white, or garbanzo beans, drained and rinsed well, one 16-ounce can of diced tomatoes, including the liquid, eight cups of chicken, beef, or vegetable broth, a half a cup of brown or ro white rice, that's optional. One tablespoon of fresh lemon or lime juice. And a quarter cup of chopped fresh chives or scallions. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low. And when it is hot, add the oil. Add the onion, celery, carrots, and garlic. And cook until the vegetables are tender, about 10 to 15 minutes. Add the fennel, if using, the bay leaves, beans, tomatoes, and broth, and bring to a low boil. Turn the heat down to low and cook for one and a half hours. Add the rice, if desired, and cook until tender, about 20 minutes. Transfer to a container, 
cover and refrigerate at least overnight and up to three days. To serve, add the lemon juice and gently reheat over low heat and garnish with chives or scallions. There's three bean. I love how they display it. It's so nice. It says, perfect for summer. This is classic gazpacho. And the yield for this recipe is about 8 cups. You will need 1 large English cucumber, diced. 3 large tomatoes, cored and diced. 4 garlic cloves, peeled and finely chopped. 1 small red onion, peeled and coarsely chopped. Two bell peppers of any color, cored, seeded, and diced. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Two to three cups of V8 or tomato juice. A half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper or more to taste. One teaspoon of black pepper or more to taste. One teaspoon of kosher salt and a quarter cup of chopped fresh flat leaf parsley, basil, dill, or cilantro leaves. And it looks like it's very simple. Put everything in a medium-sized glass or ceramic bowl and mix to combine. I love that. I love recipes like this. Cover and refrigerate at least four hours and up to overnight. Put the vegetables in the bowl of a, fruit, a food processor fitted with a steel blade and pulse until it is the desired consistency. And that's it. It's very simple. Next we have curried lentil. And the yield for this recipe is 10 to 12 cups. And you will need this. One cup of brown lentils, rinsed and picked over for stones. Four scallions, including greens, sliced. One carrot, scrubbed and sliced. Two celery stalks, including leaves, sliced. One tablespoon of curry powder. Ten to twelve cups of chicken, beef, or vegetable broth. One large potato, scrubbed and diced. One tablespoon of red wine vinegar or lemon juice. Kosher salt and black pepper to taste. Fresh mint, basil, parsley, or cilantro leaves for garnish. One lemon cut into eighths for garnish. Put the lentils, scallions, carrot, celery, curry powder, and six cups of broth in a stock pot on the stove. Turn the heat to high and bring to a bowl. Turn the heat down and to low and simmer uncovered for one hour. Add the potato and four cups of broth and cook uncovered until thickened, about one and a half to two hours. Add the vinegar or lemon juice and salt and pepper to taste. Transfer to a container, cover and refrigerate at least overnight and up to three days. To serve, Gently reheat over low. Garnish with fresh herbs and lemon, if desired. Wow, this looks really good. <laughs> it's almost like pot pie filling or something. This is split pea with smoked turkey. And the yield for this one is 12 to 14 cups. And for this one, you will need... One tablespoon of unsalted butter. One large yellow onion, peeled and finely chopped. One carrot, scrubbed and cubed. One large potato, scrubbed and diced. Two and a quarter cups of split peas, rinsed and picked over for stones. One teaspoon of dried thyme. Fourteen cups of chicken broth. And a quarter pound of smoked turkey, chopped or thinly sliced. Put a stock pot on the stove and turn the heat to medium low and when it is hot, add the butter. When the butter has melted, add the onion and carrot and cook until tender, about 10 to 15 minutes. 
Add the potato, split peas, thyme, and broth. Raise the heat to high and bring to a boil. Add the smoked turkey. Turn the heat down to low and cook, partially covered, until the peas have completely fallen apart, about two to two and a half hours. Stir occasionally and skim off any foam that forms. Serve right away or transfer to a container and cover and refrigerate up to three days. And that is the last of the soups. Now we're going to look at the vegetable recipes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven vegetable recipes. Oh, this is one of my favorites when it's done right. I love this stuff right here. <laughs> I would just eat a whole plate of that for dinner. These are roasted mixed vegetables, and this makes four servings. And for this you will need one large red onion, peeled and, and sliced, one red bell pepper, cored and sliced, one yellow squash, sliced, one zucchini squash, sliced, two cups of cherry tomatoes, one 16 ounce can of dark red kidney or white cannellini beans, drained and rinsed, six garlic cloves, peeled and thinly sliced, one tablespoon of olive oil, one teaspoon of dried thyme, basil, or rosemary, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And for the first step, you will preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Put all the ingredients in a single layer on a baking pan, or if necessary, on two baking pans, and mix well. Transfer to the oven and cook until browned, about one hour. Serve right away or at room temperature. It's the best stuff. I like to add um, seasoned salt to the olive oil and then just brush it on the vegetables on both sides and roast them that way on a grill or something. It's really good. Next we have basic stir fry. And this serves four. You will need one tablespoon of canola oil two garlic cloves, peeled and chopped, one tablespoon of chopped fresh ginger root, one red bell pepper, cored and julienned, three celery stalks, thinly sliced on the diagonal, three carrots, scrubbed and thinly sliced into coins, one zucchini, thinly sliced, one head of broccoli, florets only, half a pound of green beans, trimmed, one bunch of scallions, root, and one inch of green part trimmed and discarded. Remainder cut diagonally into one inch pieces. Twelve fresh shiitake mushrooms, wiped clean and halved. One tablespoon of dry sherry, and two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. To prepare the vegetables, cut everything to approximately the same size to ensure even cooking. Note, you can substitute your favorite seasonal vegetables for those listed. Put the sherry and soy sauce in a small bowl. Put a large skillet or wok on the stove and set the heat to medium high. When it is very hot, add the oil. Add the garlic and ginger and cook for one minute. Add the bell pepper, celery and carrots and cook for one minute. Add the remaining ingredients and cook for one additional minute and serve right away. And it's ready in just a few minutes. It looks really good. Oh boy. <laughs> looks like the top of a mushroom or something. <laughs> Sorry. Like a, a nuclear blast slider. Next we have butternut squash with thyme and honey. This will serve four if you survive the fallout. 
You will need two small butternut or acorn squash cut in half and seeded, two cups of water, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, four teaspoons of honey or maple syrup, one teaspoon of dried thyme or one tablespoon of chopped fresh thyme, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. You will preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Put the squash cut side up and water on a large roasting pan. Fill each cavity with one and a half teaspoons of butter, one teaspoon of honey, quarter teaspoon of thyme, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Transfer to the oven and cook until the squash is tender and can be pierced with a fork and the filling is bubbling about 30 minutes and serve right away. Ooh, it looks like cranberry sauce. <laughs> it's getting late, I'm sorry. <laughs> These are roasted beets with fresh herbs. And this I will serve four. And you will need eight beets, about two bunches, trimmed and the greens discarded, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of orange juice, two tablespoons of balsamic, or balsamic vinegar, half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons of finely chopped fresh rosemary or mint, that's optional, and kosher salt and black pepper to taste. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Lightly rub the beets with one tablespoon of olive oil. Put them on a baking sheet and transfer to the oven. Roast until they are tender and can be pierced with a fork about one hour. When they are cool enough to handle, carefully peel and transfer to a bowl, cut in quarters or eighths. Put the orange juice, vinegar, remaining one tablespoon of olive oil and mustard in a bowl and stir to combine. Pour over the beets and mix well. Add salt, pepper, and herbs to taste and serve right away. This is a recipe for uh, pan-seared corn on the cob, and this also serves four. You will need one tablespoon of unsalted butter, four ears of corn shucked and strings removed, one teaspoon of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and two scallion greens chopped. Put a large skillet on the stove and turn the heat to medium-high. When it is hot, add the butter. Add the corn, sprinkle with the salt and pepper, and cook, turning the cobs from time to time until they are tender and well toasted, about seven minutes. Serve right away, garnished with the scallions. My mom used to do something similar when I was a kid. Um, she roasted it in the oven. I might like to try that. Oh, no, that does. This is cherry tomatoes with garlic and rosemary, and this serves four. You will need two pints of cherry tomatoes, halved, one tablespoon of olive oil, two garlic cloves, very thinly sliced, salt and pepper to taste, and one tablespoon of chopped fresh basil leaves. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Put the tomatoes on a baking sheet and drizzle with the olive oil. Top each tomato half with a slice of garlic and sprinkle with salt and pepper. Transfer to the oven and cook until the tomatoes are starting to soften and begin to give off their juices about 10 minutes. Sprinkle with basil and serve right away or at room temperature. This, um, this is a recipe for garlic rosemary roasted potatoes, and you will need two pounds of new potatoes, halved or quartered, depending on size, two tablespoons of olive oil, four garlic cloves, peeled and finely chopped, 
one teaspoon of kosher salt, and two teaspoons of chopped fresh rosemary, or three quarters of a teaspoon of dried rosemary. You will preheat the oven to 450 degrees. Put the potatoes, olive oil, garlic, and salt in a bowl and mix until combined. Transfer the mixture onto a baking sheet or large baking pan and put in the oven. Roast until deeply browned and tender, about 35 to 45 minutes. Sprinkle with rosemary and serve right away. Sounds quick and easy. Ooh, that's different. That might be good too. Uh, this is a recipe for roasted carrots, and this also serves four. And you will need for this recipe one pound of carrots, scrubbed clean and cut in half lengthwise, one tablespoon of olive oil, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees. Put the carrot spears on a baking sheet, drizzle with the oil, and sprinkle with the salt and pepper. Mix well and transfer to the oven. Bake until the carrots are tender and golden brown, 20 to 30 minutes. Sprinkle with the thyme and serve right away. These recipes are easy. but they do look pretty. <laughs> this is a recipe for mushrooms with rosemary, and this also serves four. You will need two tablespoons of olive oil, two garlic cloves minced, two pounds of wild or button mushrooms, wiped clean with a dish towel, one teaspoon of uh, kosher salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper or red pepper flakes, and two teaspoons of fresh rosemary. Place a large skillet on the stove and turn the heat to medium-high. When it is hot, add the oil and garlic. Cook one minute. Add the mushrooms, salt and pepper, or red pepper flakes and cook, stirring from time to time until the mushrooms are lightly browned and have released their juices about 20 minutes. Serve right away, garnished with fresh rosemary. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at the color. That's really nice. This is a recipe for roasted Brussels sprouts, and it serves four. And you will need one pound of Brussels sprouts, ends trimmed and discarded, buds cut in half, two garlic cloves, peeled and thinly sliced or minced, one tablespoon of olive oil, half a cup of water, a quarter, tup a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. First you're going to preheat your oven, for, oven to 425 degrees. Put everything on a baking sheet, mix well, and transfer to the oven. Cook until the Brussels sprouts turn bright green and are golden brown on the edges and the cut end about 15 minutes. Serve right away. I bet they'd be good while they were nice and hot, but not after they cooled off. Like most roasted vegetables. You really have to eat them immediately. Ooh, now these look good. This is a recipe for zucchini pancakes, and this serves four. And you will need two cups of shredded zucchini, about two small zucchini, one teaspoon of kosher salt, two large eggs, lightly beaten, two-thirds of a cup of all-purpose flour, three-quarters of a cup of crumbled or shredded cheese, like feta or cheddar, four scallions, greens and whites chopped, one tablespoon of olive or vegetable oil. Put the shredded zucchini in a colander and sprinkle with the salt. Set the colander in a bowl to collect the liquid that will drain off. Using your hand, press down on the zucchini so that as much liquid as possible drains out into the bowl. 
Stir the zucchini and repeat. Discard the liquid. Put the zucchini in a large bowl and add the eggs, flour, cheese, and scallions, and mix well. Put a large skillet on the stove and set the heat to medium. When it is very hot, add the oil. Using a tablespoon, scoop the zucchini mixture and spread it into round, flat nests on the skillet. Each nest should make a circle that's about two inches wide and a quarter inch thick. Repeat to fill the skillet. Cook until deeply golden, about five minutes on each side. Repeat with the remaining mixture and serve right away. They actually do look really good. <laughs> and that is the last vegetable recipe. Thank you so much for coming to listen to these wonderful soup and vegetable recipes with me. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again really soon.